Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, welcome to week five on the road to Emmaus. I'm Bishop Earl Boyer of Lansing. It's so very good to have you here. Over the course of a year, we are walking together through the most holy sacrifice of the Mass. Every week I issue a communication, just like this one, containing catechesis, inspiration, and a challenge. We might call this a training in holiness. I encourage you to invite your family members and friends to join us. This week, our challenge is a little different from the previous four weeks as we take a pause and refocus on a challenge that we've already done. This is something we'll do every fifth week on the road to Emmaus. Why is this a good thing to do? Because in the interior life, a virtue is an acquired good habit, and acquiring good habits requires repetition. Hence, you can take time to prayerfully reread St. Luke's account of the road to Emmaus or double down on your efforts to arrive for Holy Mass 15 minutes early and to use that time for silent prayer fostered by the prayer of St. Thomas Aquinas for use prior to Mass. The choice is yours, and may God bless you. Okay, we've discussed our possible challenges and consumed quite a bit of catechesis in recent weeks. So now it's time for some inspiration did you know that the Diocese of Lansing is blessed by four perpetual adoration chapels? Each is a sacred place where people can spend time with Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. They are usually open 24-7. You can find them in Lansing, Ann Arbor, Jackson, and Burton. Our multimedia journalist, Matt Riedel, got up in the middle of the night in order to find out just who frequents these chapels when most of the rest of us are fast asleep. The nighttime hours, the early morning hours, are those that nobody really likes to do. So I said, well, I'm going to sign up for 1 o'clock. So for 30 years, yes, I've been getting up at, come here to 1 o'clock in the morning. It's become a part of my life, you know, like, and I've, I just, I really, um, I praise God that I'm able to do it. It's so quiet. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at God who's, who's here in my presence, just fantastic. I have a sense that he, he is with me, uh, not only in this place, but also when I leave. He, I mean, he, he, is, he is with me at all times. And I am closer to God. I'm understanding him more, and ever since I, uh, told the Holy Spirit to be with me, to help me through life. He's been there. He's been there. We are living in an age when people don't come to Mass, don't believe in the Eucharist. And uh, so the idea of sitting there in the chapel when we can't get people to sit in the Mass is a foreign concept to many. But this is God's love language, uh, for him to give us his son in the simplest form, and then just to allow us, us to gaze at him. I think that's their recognition. I am not here without him. There is no here without him. Everything comes from him. Everything belongs to him. He owes me nothing, but he's given me everything. And when we look in the monstrance, we see just how much he's given. And how can we stay away? No way do I want to give up this, this hour. I have no intentions of giving it up I th in, until it's God's plan that I give it up. I say, Georgia, you can't do this anymore, old lady, so <laughs> I will try and listen to him. And, but I will, I will definitely miss it when that time comes. 